So guys, inside this case is every single smartphone that I've ever bought with my own money to review on this YouTube channel. I would never sell them, I would never trade them. Every single smartphone represents a different part in my growth in YouTube and it's like a collector's item, it's like a memento and everyone brings back certain memories and certain feelings. So I thought I would share with you all my collections and before we get started, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Let's see if we can get 100 likes today. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel because as you're about to see, I buy a lot of tech and share it with you guys. So let's take a look. I'm nervous, I don't want to. Okay, so let's see if I can open up this case without killing myself or breaking these smartphones. This is a dangerous angle. <laughs> okay. Steady. There we go. That's every single smartphone I've ever bought. So let's take a few minutes to just reminisce about the past, how these stick out in my mind, and what I like about them, what I don't like about them, stuff like that. So let's go in order, shall we, between the devices that I bought a long time ago to now. And I'm doing this all based on memory, just because I feel like that would be the best way to kind of recollect the past. Um, so the first device I bought was the Galaxy S6 Active. Now this device means a lot to me. I would never give this device up and for a lot of reasons. This was the first device that I actually said, okay, it's coming out today. I'm gonna go to Best Buy and I'm going to spend my hard-earned money, $700, to buy it just to review it. I'm gonna use it as my daily driver I had a perfectly good phone though, but I just said, hey, let me just buy it. So what I really like about this device, it's the S6, but it's waterproof, it's shockproof, it's everything. And I've taken this device to its limits. Anytime I go on vacation, I take this thing underwater, under salt water, under fresh water, everything. I don't hold back. And because of that, the port on the bottom is actually like green and just kind of like corroded over. So it won't charge with most cables. I have to use a wireless charging pad. So it still works. It's like my GoPro of a phone. Anytime I'm gonna to go to the beach or on vacation, I can pop my SIM card in here. No, I can just toss it around and it's good to go. And I'm just not afraid to really give it my best. And also this device really stands out in my mind because when it came out, I got it that day, and the next day I was doing drop test after test after torture test, and overall I probably got a few hundred thousand views, which was pretty big for my channel. I think at the time I may not have even had a hundred thousand subscribers. So this device I really owe to just propelling my channel into the future. So great device. So next I would think would be the Zenfone 2 which is the, this device right here. So here's the Zenfone 2. It's a great device because it was very cheap at the time. You could buy it for, I think, $200 for the low tiered storage and low RAM model. I bought it, I wasn't happy with it because it had so much bloatware. So what I did, I installed CyanogenMod. As you can see, it's booting up right now. And basically what that did, it made it a more stock Android experience it got rid of all the bloatware and it made the phone really good to use. So this was a great device. I reviewed this device more than I made it my daily driver. I really never did use it long term just because I know it's a you know an affordable device but the build quality, I just don't like it. It's very plasticky feeling and it's not very en enjoyable to use but it still works really well if you're looking for an affordable device. And next, I would think would be the Moto G third generation. So right here, this device is good because coming from the Zenfone 2 that had a bigger screen, I really enjoyed the Moto G because the screen was smaller. It has that same look of the Nexus 6, which was popular at the time. And again, I installed a custom ROM with this device as well. I think I installed Android 6.0. So it was like just coming out on devices. And I put that one up here. 
Um, it wasn't daily driver material at the time because again, this one is CyanogenMod. mod. So I just kind of used these two devices to tinker on. I made some great videos. I did some water resistance testing because if you take the back off, there's a seal right there that basically allows the device to be water resistant. So fun times were had with this device as well. But so far, the best of these is still the S6 Active. I had a lot of fun with it. So next on the list, I believe was the LG V10. It even got Android 6.0 a little bit later than I would have anticipated, but can't complain. Great screen, great camera. You can do manual controls on it. The only thing is that the battery life was really bad. It got to a point to where at like 3 p.m. I had to plug in or my phone would die. So I ended up getting the Zero Lemon battery. As you can see, it's a beast. It adds a lot of heft to your device, but I consider it a permanent fixture to the LG V10 right now, just because without it, it wouldn't last very long at all. Again, great device. I used it for actually quite a few months as my daily driver um, until something else better came along. So, good times there. The next device on my list that I bought, I believe, will be the Galaxy S7. So this device really stands out because I never had a Galaxy S6. I never had a normal one. I only had the S6 Active. So purchasing this was a really different experience. So the glass back, the glass front, the curved edges, everything made a really great just presentation overall. It really refined what the S6 was, even though I never really experienced the normal S6 firsthand. The thing that really blew me away with this device was the camera. So the autofocus was super fast. If you were doing video, you could run up to an object really quick and it's gonna lock focus super fast. The low light performance is really good. Even though this device came out, what, March or April of 2016, it still competes with the latest and greatest. So the iPhone 7 Plus, the LG V20, the Google Pixel. This thing I wouldn't hesitate to recommend to buy even right now. Great device. If you want something bigger, get the Galaxy S7 Edge. Okay, now the next one I bought, I believe was the HTC 10. So here's the HTC 10. Very similar to the Galaxy S7, just in its footprint, about the same size. However, the back is metal instead of glass, so if you drop it, the Galaxy S7 is gonna crack most of the time. The HTC, the HTC 10 is gonna be a lot stronger. Also, the chamfered edges on the device are freaking crazy. Let me get up and show you. So, like those edges, as you can see, are sharp. <laughs> Figuratively, of course, they're not gonna cut your hand off. So I really love this device, just the feel in the hand, very solid. The power button is super tactile, which I love on devices. Um, it has USB Type-C, which out of all these devices I've showed you so far, this was the first USB Type-C device I owned. Um, the capacitive fingerprint scanner is really good. So it's the same shape basically as the Galaxy S7, as you can see, hopefully but it's capacitive and it's not an actual physical button. So the fingerprint scanner in a way works faster because you don't have to actually press down. You just tap and you're good to go. Speakers are gonna be better than the Galaxy S7. I'm trying to talk. The speakers are better than the Galaxy S7 just because the Galaxy S7 is water resistant, so they had to put a mesh coating over that. The HTC 10 has kind of simulated dual front facing speakers it uses the top and the side to make a really good listening experience. Not as loud as like the Nexus 6 or Nexus 6P, but it's up there in smartphone quality speakers. So the next device I bought is the iPhone SE. So this is a crazy device because it's one of the first ones that I bought iPhone wise to review. I had their original iPhone, but I switched to Android and I never really looked back. But getting more serious and reviewing tech, I figured I should owe it a chance. I wasn't really a big fan with the smaller screen. It's just way too small after being used to, you know, five inch devices and a higher. 
and ultimately I did crack the device because I did a hundred layers of iPhone screen protector challenge on it. I dropped it and the hundred screen protectors did not protect it like I anticipated. So definitely check out that video. I'll link it in the description below along with my other favorite videos that coincide with all of these phones. So great device. It got me warmed up to iOS though for the upcoming release of the iPhone 7 Plus which is one of my next devices. But not the very next, because the one device I got after the iPhone SE would be the Moto G fourth generation. So as you can see in comparison to the third generation, it's a little bit bigger. Also the third generation has like the grippy tactile surface. This is still grippy, but more smooth. Again, bigger device. And this device was a little bit interesting because it was an Amazon like Prime exclusive because I think I paid like $125 for it and that got me this device with also ads on it. So if you don't mind ads, you get a really cheap experience. It's stock Android again for the most part. It works really good. If you're looking for a budget device that still works good, has a decent camera, the Moto G fourth generation I can really just recommend wholeheartedly. So the next one is the iPhone 7 Plus. So here's this bad boy right here. It's my first like full-on introduction to an Android. This is not an Android device. My first on introduction to iOS and I really liked it. Obviously it's not everyone's cup of tea but I went in it I went in it with an open mind and I really like it. It has a new taptic feedback engine which actually feels like a button which I don't mind at all. The feel is really good in the hand. You're not going to find too many smartphones that feel better than this. The camera is great. iOS for the most part works great. It's a great device and if you're an iPhone user, there's no reason why I can't recommend this. And last but not least, it's a bonus. It's not my device, but it's the LG V20. So this is the device that I'm currently reviewing right now. It's all owner from AT&T. So a full review is coming on that very soon. But I just wanted to mention this device because this device represents all the other devices that I've reviewed but I don't own. So the LG V20, I reviewed the Galaxy S7 Active. I reviewed like a smart projector and a few other devices as well. So when you're a tech reviewer, sure you want to buy everything that comes out but you can't do that all the time. You have to get a few review units. I love to buy stuff to review it long term but it's just not feasible to spend $700 every other month on a phone. So while every other previous device I showed you I've purchased, one like this is one that I have borrowed from AT&T. They're not paying me to review it, they're just loaning it to me to review, which saves me a lot of money. I don't have to spend $700 to check this thing out. So I'm very lucky that I have the ability to do that at this point in my YouTube career. And in the description below, I will link to one video per phone that's my favorite so check those out if you have some free time if not whatever I won't blame you and if you've made it this far don't forget that thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and I will see you later bye